Ever wanted to synthesize realistic water sounds? Well, honestly, neither had I until I figured out how. So let me show you. What is going on everyone? My name is Matt, aka Martin. Welcome if you're new here. I'm an electronic music producer, educator, and Ableton certified trainer from Melbourne, Australia. And today I'm gonna show you how to synthesize realistic water sounds. So the other day I was playing around with making some noise samples for a little project that I'm working on and I kind of stumbled across this way to create a realistic sounding running water sound using only two stock Ableton Live devices. And today I want to share that technique with you. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and comment down below and subscribe if you're new. And if you really enjoy my content and this video, feel free to head on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can support me by buying me a coffee or where you can buy the rack that I'm going to show off later in this video. Or if you become a member, you get things like the rack that I made in this video for free. So you can also do that over there as well. Now, a quick disclaimer before we get into this, if you want to use water sounds for a project you're working on, you're probably best off actually using sounds of recorded water. But if you lack the facilities to be able to do that, or you really want to just be able to synthesize some water, this is going to be a really cool way where you can get pretty close to really realistic water sounds really, really, really quickly. It also offers up some unique creative opportunities and you can take the concept and the idea a little bit of a step further and apply your own unique creative twist to it to get some really cool and interesting sounds. Okay, so let's not waste any more time and let's jump right into the sound design. So before I show you how to synthesize your own water sounds using a really simple concept, I just wanna show you a simple version of what this can end up sounding like. This is using only two stock Ableton Live devices. Sounds pretty cool, right? To my ears, that sounds like pretty realistic water for only using two stock devices. Okay, so let's get into how to make this. So I have a blank MIDI track here inside of Ableton Live, and first off, we need some kind of noise generator. So I'm going to use an operator for this. Inside of operator, I'm gonna set the first operator to generate noise white, and I'm gonna turn off the other operators because we won't need them. I'm also going to turn off the filter because I don't want it filtered at all, and I'm gonna adjust the envelope parameters here to make it so that it's just purely on off. So no attack, no release. I'm then also gonna turn up the spread control all the way up to 100% so we get a really wide sound, and I'm also gonna turn down the velocity sensitivity on the operator to zero, which means that regardless of what velocity we press the note at, it's always gonna play back at the same volume. If you'd like to have a different velocity sensitivity, you're welcome to, but I'm gonna set mine to zero. Now, just right out of the bat, this obviously sounds like this. Which kind of has some watery quality to it already, kind of sounds like some heavy rain, but we're not quite there yet. Next, I'm gonna add the special ingredient to this sound, which is Ableton Live's vocoder device. I'm going to make sure that my carrier on my vocoder device is set to noise and that this little XY pad is set all the way to the top right corner. I'm going to click enhance and now without changing anything else, have a listen to how this sounds. And really, that's it. That to me sounds like a fairly realistic water sound. We've got the noise there and we've got the kind of bubbly sounds from the droplets hitting the water and running across the water top or whatever you kind of think. It kind of is there already. And that's really it. That's all we really need to do is add a vocoder to white noise and we're gonna be vocoding white noise with white noise. But of course, we can adjust a few parameters to make this sound a little bit better and adjust the sound of the water. Firstly, I'm going to play around with the range and the bands controls here. So first off, a little bit of a crash course in how vocoders work. We have a carrier signal and a modulator signal, both of which are split up into a bunch of different frequency bands. This, the amount of bands is decided by the bands control here in our vocoder device. And the output level of the modulator's signal through each filter is then analyzed and used to control the volume of each of those independent filter 
bands of the corresponding filter for the carrier, which effectively results in these like narrow frequency bands that just have volume going up and down. And in the case of noise, this is random, of course. And the range control sets the range of the lowest frequency band to the highest frequency band. So what I'm gonna do is set the bands control here all the way up to 40, which is the maximum amount that our vocoder will allow. I'm gonna set the range to 16 kilohertz. And now we have something that sounds like this. It just gives us a little bit of a higher fidelity. And if you wanted to, you could of course go and change the bands lower if you liked the sound of that a little bit more. I wouldn't recommend going any lower than 20 bands though. And if you'd like a little bit more high frequencies, you can set the range to higher than 16 kilohertz. However, I found it started to get a little bit crunchy if you went above this too much. Now we can also play around with our band width control, which adjusts the band width of each of the filters. And I find having this anywhere from 110 to 150 works well. I'm gonna set it to 110. Actually, let's set it to 150. Now you're not gonna notice an immediate change with this. But it is a little bit subtle. And if you want a more metallic sound, you can have it lower. Which ends up kind of cool, but I'm gonna keep it at 150. Now for the fun part, which is playing around with the gate and depth controls, which adds the bubbliness to the sound. First, let's start by increasing the depth control and have a listen to how this sounds. It's kind of like we're turning down the tap a little bit and just getting water to trickle out, obviously removing some of the low frequencies in the process. Then the gate control kind of acts a little bit like a rate control in a way. If I start to increase the gate control, actually I'm gonna turn down the depth first and then increase the gate control. It has a similar effect to the depth, but not quite the same. Now you'll notice that both with the depth and the gate control, we tend to favor the high frequencies here. Now there's kind of a few different ways we can go about rectifying this. However, I'm gonna rectify a very simple way with a high shelf and a low shelf put before this vocoder. I'm gonna add a channel EQ before this vocoder, which is simply a three band channel EQ here, which is fantastic. And I'm gonna reduce the high frequency band by about nine to 10 dB. And you'll notice that also, as well as having a high shelf, introduces a low pass filter. And you'll notice that now when we adjust the gate, we've kind of lowered the frequency bands within which this vocoder is focusing on. If we'd like to also accent some more low frequencies, we can also add a low shelf and boost the low frequencies here in this channel EQ as well. Now, if we have the gate really high, and let through only a few droplets, we can increase the release control which adds kind of like a cavernous reverb to the signal, which I think is really cool. Uh, from here, we can adjust things like the pitch of the droplets with the formant control. Increasing the formant control will pitch these up and decreasing will pitch them down. Let's adjust the gate control and the depth control as well as our release and formant controls to add, get to something kind of a little bit different here. I can also increase the output level using the level control on the vocoder. And now if I wanna add a little bit more of that original noise to the signal, I can turn down the dry wet control. Or if I want a little bit more control over the amount of noise I'm adding to the signal, I can group the vocoder to an audio effect rack, create a new chain, and now I have control over the water signal and the noise signal. So I can just turn the noise all the way down and slowly introduce it.
Beyond this, you can add some further effects and change some other parameters of the vocoders and maybe even things like the operator and the EQ as well to adjust and shape the sound even further to your liking. Which is exactly what I've done with a little rack that I've put together called Martin's Water Generator. So I took this concept of vocoding noise with noise and added a few extra things and put it all into a rack here with 16 different macro controls as well as a bunch of different macro variations to get a bunch of different water sounds usable in some sort of project or something like that or just for fun. So let me run through a few of the different variations and play around with some of the controls here so you can get a bit of a sense of what this does. And if you like the rack, you can head over to my Buy Me A Coffee page and purchase it there for only a few dollars. Otherwise, if you're a member, you get it for free or you can just simply make your own using the technique that I've showed you in this video. And there you have it. That is how you can synthesize water from scratch using only stock Ableton Live devices. If you create anything using this method, please let me know, share it with me. I'd love to hear what you come up with. And of course, if you like the video, make sure to drop a like and a comment below and subscribe if you're new. And of course, head on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can support the channel and obviously buy the, uh, the little rack as well or become a member and, and get it for free as part of your membership. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a good one. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you all in the next video.